focused. Lots of different factors come into play, as you can see when looking at consolidation scenarios. Let's look at this second scenario, another illustration where the problem is less about data integration and more about adding a new system to the landscape. Are there existing standards and processes that can be reused? Can we reuse shared master data? Can we start with making sure the structure and definition of glue components are following the standard? But here's the key question. Is there a standard of any kind that we can immediately adopt to the data integration problem so it does not grow exponentially every time we have business change such as M&A activity or a change in systems landscape? Let's look at business scenario number three. Well-defined and structured metadata represents vital business information. It can help or it can hurt. Consider the top example where the sales territory of Poland has been misaligned and put into the wrong geographic category. Consider the implication of providing decision support based on faulty statistics, not to mention the sales team that had an entire country subtracted from their earned revenue. How about this example? Would you like some chewing gum? What flavor? It all depends who you ask. Since marketing, R&D, and finance have all systematically defined this particular metadata differently. Each provides their own interpretation of one flavor. Each provides their own version. This is a worse problem than not being harmonized, as the same element can show up with different results. Defining and naming the attributes clearly as three different flavor attributes and not one is the bare minimum one needs to do to avoid confusion and wrong decisions. Let's look at business scenario number four. Technology has advanced to allow for a transport mechanism with real-time integration options with service-oriented architecture. Unfortunately, even though the format and transport mechanism is standard, the semantics are not. I can get real-time sales data for a product from Systems A, sure, but if the sales definition is not the same as mine, what did I really get? Is the sales with returns, without returns, before tax, after tax? Each system is working with a different shape. Our example from scenario two shows up again with the question on what shape to inherit. I may be preaching to the choir on some of these scenarios, but they're still worth looking at for continuity purposes. Let's look at these scenarios together and see what's needed, assuming, of course, at some point in time, this is a situation your organization might be addressing. In scenario one, we discuss whether to service the data warehouse or a one-time customer master creation for a new ERP system. We do require an integration MDM hub that can be used. Metadata analysis, business rules, cleansing rules, harmonization decisions are all prerequisites for creating the integration hub in this example. The hub cannot be created without first defining what it looks like. The hub, by definition, is the hub. So we need to know how it integrates with current applications. An MDM hub must enforce business rules, and it must enforce governance. Let's look at scenario two, where we have a new transactional system in the landscape, and where we have the luxury of using defined standards. We need a standard. Creating the standard will require metadata analysis to build what we would call system-independent standard metadata that is, in fact, the result of the analysis. In the event of reporting hierarchies and need for accuracy and definition of attributes, we would be looking at metadata analysis more from a definition and domain harmonization perspective. In the SOA integration scenario, we are dealing with data interchange standards built on top of technical metadata to support transformation from one to another. 
the approach should be to create the standard S, where map is between A and S and system B and S. By virtue of A linking to S and C linking to S, we have linked A to C. This is a simplistic view, but the concept we're talking about is supported by it. Point-to-point -point mappings, however, will not help. The moment we start dealing with standards on metadata or domain level, automatically stewardship and governance must come into play. All of these components are moving toward what we are labeling the enterprise standard metadata layer. We will be going into different approach options which will help us start building this. The key point is that it should not be treated as another metadata repository project. It could be treated as a repository of analysis results from every IT project that is underway, but in a way that contributes to the building of the standard layer. L listen to this. We were working with a customer that spent a year of doing analysis, the results of which all went into a, a series of Excel spreadsheets. Then another project started in the same department from scratch. Now that's a sin. We say build it over time with each project and it needs to be system independent and it needs to be by definition reusable. The repository includes all the current metadata assets so that the standard layer is linked to the system layer and is not a silo. Impact analysis of change is key. We highlight these as technical metadata in the following slides. Some of the additional metadata components that are required in building a shareable component hub are outlined here in bold. In a way, we have expanded the scope of how we traditionally define metadata. A critical part in creating an integration hub is the implementation of cleansing and consolidation rules. An example of a consolidation rule would say, for example, match on customer name and give it a weight of 50%. Apply 30% weight on city and zip. Survivorship rules are more designed for change management. For example, if there are three systems feeding and integrating, which system update takes precedence? The rule might state take system A's change on tax ID, but system B is the owner for the address, and so on. In the past couple of years, we've seen domain harmonization and mapping transition from being identified as reference data to being more and more defined as metadata. Some of the standards in the metadata space, such as ISO 11179, have had permissible values as part of the standard